Amen. So, repentance is a free decision on the part of the sinner made possible. Now, these are things I've taught years ago. I'm just going by my old notes here. On the decision, we want to change. No one came to me and says, and stuck a gun to my head and says, convert to Christ or I'm going to blow your brains out. No, no one came to me like that. The Holy Spirit came to us and was messing with our hearts, <laughs> really messing with our hearts as sinners, making, up, making us as miserable as you could be miserable living on earth as human beings, and that's the shape we were when we freely invited Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. No one made us confess. No one made us become Christians. We freely, out of our own free will, decided, and Jesus did not save me, that I could receive salvation. I confessed him. I needed him. And then I was saved. I confessed with my own mouth. Now that we have the teaching going around that Jesus saves you in order that you can confess because you're so depraved that as a sinner you can't confess Jesus Lord. It's funny. Sinners can confess just about everything there's confess. But when it comes to confession, Jesus saved me, I'm a sinner, seem like they just can't get it out of their mouth. That's what these modern day preachers are telling us in that camp of Calvinism. That you're so depraved you can't confess Jesus as Lord. He has to save you first. And then you confess him. Well, why should I confess him once I'm already saved? You confess to get saved. Oops. Well, whatever. Okay. Now, you talk about this enabling grace. There is, a, there is a part that that invisible grace of God or the Holy Spirit or we can use terms like the aura, uh, the light, stuff like that the New Agers talk about. There is that part that the Holy Spirit plays to draw our hearts to Him. I believe that. I believe God, the Spirit, draws us to Him because if not, there's years, yeah, I was not drawn to God. I was drawn to the devil and I knew it and I loved it. I didn't have any ideals I wanted to serve God. I was having one hell of a time living as a sinner. But when God was messing with my heart to give my heart to Him, things entirely changed. He was messing with us real bad in our heads like the old drug. Don't mess with my head. Don't, don't give me a bad trip. Well, He was giving us a bad trip and messing with our heads in December of the 6th, you know, 2000, well, 1971. That's only been two days ago. 43 years ago that he was messing with us real big. But we, on that day, we did give ourselves to Christ. And we confessed him as Lord with our own mouth. We repented of our sins and they were mountains of them. The prayer was, take this garbage that's been my life and give me your life. That was one of, part of our prayer. Take this garbage that's been my life. I think everybody could make that confession. Well, we made that as sinners. I was not saved when I made that confession. I meant what I said. Take this garbage that's my life and I want your life in exchange. And when I did that, there was a transformation. Another new age term. And the light came on. Another new age term. And a whole regeneration, a biblical term, that took place inside of our life. And that whole day was spent thanking and praising God because we had left darkness gross darkness and came into the marvelous light and I remember you know if you lived in Montana in December in 1971 was the worst snowstorms in the history of that state they're saying that now this is 43 years later but in those days there was so much snow on the ground five to six foot we went out in the snow and even the snow all the brightness of the sparkles with the sun on it was not as bright as the brightness that came on in their side of our heads. And I was remarking to my wife that many years ago, I said, my God, you know, I got this brightness in my head. It's even brighter than, you know, all this. Go out in the, in the snow and everything's totally white and the sun is bright and the sky is blue and all the snow and, you know, the reflection just about give you snow blindness. And I was explaining to her, I just feel this whole light inside of my head. We didn't know what that was. We'd never been saved. All we knew was marijuana highs and LSD highs and booze highs yuck he couldn't compare to that and between the physical brightness of the atmosphere out there and all that twinkle twinkle little 
snowflakes was blinding our natural eyes inside we was blinded by the light of God because it came on inside of our darkened soul we were saved <laughs> how you like that I can't get any better than that that's what salvation meant to us it was that enabling grace I'm tr trying to tell you that it was made possible by the grace of God it was not because we were good it was not because we paid tithes and offerings and not because we joined a church it's because we repented of our confessed we confessed our sins, repented of the sins that we committed. But that was just the beginning. We had to repent over millions of things since those days. We still repent. It wasn't just a one-time deal. You repent and you're saved eternally forever. What about all the sins you might have committed? Maybe not intentionally, but everybody gets dirty along the way. What would it be like if people took one bath in their whole life? Yeah, come on. We say, that whew, there is a thing in your Bible that says uncleanness is a sin. I knew a person that it was a sin to him to take a bath. Well, the hippies were, some of them were like that, but I knew a person as a little kid growing up in Arkansas. <laughs> this guy, old Mr. Boone, kin to the, the Boones, that, you know, the famous Daniel Boone. That guy was allergic to water. He would not take a bath. And the years that I knew him as a kid, he never took a bath. He had so much dirt on his arms, he would just flake it off. His fingers, his face, he had a few teeth left that he chewed the back and spit out and went all different directions. It smoked, he rolled his old cigarettes, pulled out the little pouch and rolled them in his little, his fingers were totally yellow from, from rolling smoking cigarettes, his old, old arm cigarette stuff. And his fingernails were long and curled under. They were so filthy, dirty, and never cleaned them. I mean, this guy, I liked him because I liked living like, you know, a hillbilly because I was in Arkansas. I thought hillbillies are supposed to be like this. Mom, I don't want to take no bath. Well, I want to be like Mr. Boone. Well, Mr. Boone was so filthy, man. I don't know how his wife ever, he never even took his clothes off when he got in bed. He went to bed with his dirty clothes on, you know, and these, these nice feather beds they had. And I'm telling you, they, it was really neat. <laughs> Mrs. Boone, she didn't have any teeth. Back to him spitting tobacco, he had a few teeth that was almost all rotten, and he was laughing, all the spit would come out of his mouth. He'd always have tobacco juice hanging down here, and he never washed it off. I mean, he was filthy, dirty. His clothes were always filthy. The man, as long as I knew him, never took a bath. Never. Now, it's funny, Mrs. Boone, she didn't have any teeth. She was fat and jolly. She cleaned up. But her mother, the old, the old, the old lady, that she, she was just dressed immaculately. She was about 90 years old. She'd sit in a rocking chair and do a little knitting. And she had a habit of tobacco. She'd dip snuff and have a big old wad there and always spit in a can. Made me sick. But, uh, she dipped snuff and spit. And then, but she was clean as a pin, living with that dirty guy. And he would just smoke and cuss, man. He could cuss. That's where I learned some of my curse words. He would cuss blue streaks, man, and um, he needed to repent. He needed, he needed to take a bath. What I'm getting at, what if everybody was like Mr. Boone? Now, as a kid in your early teens, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old when I was there, all kids might think that's neat. He could shoot a squirrel 100 yards off, knock his eyes off, and he always ate the brains out of squirrel heads. I got a habit picked up doing that, too. His hatchets or his axes was so sharp, you even looked at it, it almost cut your eyes. He would have those things razor sharp. I loved to watch him cut. He never cut straight. He always cut at angles. And I just loved him watch him cut those trees, you know, for his fire. And he'd sit in there and cuss up a storm, tell all these jokes about him being in the army. And he had the most, you know, they wore those long johns. He wore them year round. The old red ones, they were so black around here and around his neck. I thought, my God, don't you ever take those things off and wash them. And you know, he'd pull up his old combat boots. Still wore old combat boots from World War II. And you see those old Long Johns hanging down. It's just grimy, filthy, dirty. And I mean, his, his shins down there, it was just caked with filth. The guy never took a bath. Now, back to my story about repentance. Repentance means to get clean, confess your sins, take a bath, a spiritual bath. That's what it means. So I'm getting at, don't you think that people need a bath? Initially, if they got washed somewhere in their life, don't you think maybe if they do kind of live like that or whatever, they get morally filthy? Don't you think there's a bath is in order? I 
his head. <laughs> he had scabs, you won't believe up here, because he didn't have much hair left. He, he was about 70-something years old when we knew him, but I mean, you know, he had scabs up there. He never washed his head, just caked in filth. And he was constantly killing animals and skinning them and all that blood, everything, you know. I mean, I don't know how the guy lived. And I mean, seriously. I loved Mrs. Boone's cooking because she could cook good. But um, unbelievable, they had, they didn't have, they still had the rafters in the old shack they lived in. And literally, chickens would flap on the rafters and, and dump their dump on the table because it was just right below. And they, they didn't care about chicken squats all over the table. You just went around it and got your biscuits and your gravy and your squirrel heads and ate your brains and, you know, your pig feet. And she made, you know, you know so, she made soap out of the lard of hogs. He never used it. I never saw the man wash his hands after, you know, scanning animals and doing all that stuff. Friends, somebody is doing something weird today in church land because that's the way church is. It never takes a bath anymore. And you understand why it's so filthy dirty. So the world runs around and says, well, if the church ain't doing it, by God, I'm going to get away with it because if they don't think it's necessary, it's not necessary for me. So the sinner's in worse shape than the Christians are. They don't take a bath. They're not even saved. Well, at least some of the church people, even though they may not be taking baths, some were. At one time, they might have confessed Jesus as Lord, but he's way back there in history. But Miss Boone was very pleasant. She talked to us about the Bible, and he would cuss up a streak. You know, he used those big words like that as a little kid. That just kind of like hurts you because, you know, we was brought up with the Bible. And that guy's mouth was as dirty as his body was. I mean, he was a filthy. <laughs> well. Okay. This enabling grace. Number three. I'm almost out of time already. The definition of saving faith. Now, we're talking about... Faith that saves you. Believing in Jesus. Believing he can save you. That's saving faith. It's not just, I believe in Jesus and I'm saved. No, you've got to do more than just believe in Jesus. The devil believes in Jesus. But he's certainly not saved. There's a saving faith here involved. And that means trust in Christ as Savior. Holy and totally, dear ones. Amen. And God demands this. God demands he is demanding today. I want to end today's message what God's telling us today in this repentance revolution. He is demanding and he is commanding the whole world to repent. It's in the Bible, in the book of Acts, I believe, where there was a time they commanded all men repent. God's bringing this up again. All men need to repent today all over the whole world. That means all church people and all pagans definitely need it. The church is as dirty as the world, dear ones. They're more morally filthy because... You know, like the Jews, they didn't think they needed repentance. They had hard hearts. They were self-righteous because they had the law. Not naturally, they had to spyglass that and see what all the Gentiles and all the sins they were committing. Because God's word said you should do this, do that. And they said, well, look at us. We're better than them. But they weren't better than them. The church is no better than the world today. I got news for you. This is the bad news. The church is in one hell of an ugly mess today. If Jesus was really to come back today on Sunday, I think 99% of the church people would go to hell. That's the truth of the matter. I wake up every morning and repent of my sins during the night. And during the day I repent. You say, well, I did that years ago. Do it again. Do it. Make it a habit of con confessing. Well, if you had a bad thought, yeah, we all have. If you had a bad attitude, we all got those. Even if you actually sin, we do that sometimes. You still need to repent. You need to get your slate clean. You need to wash it all away. We need to take a spiritual bath. We need to confess Him to the Lord. You need to do warfare against this stuff because... You can't do enough repentance. Really, you can't do enough repentance. Amen. You just can't. Even the Muslims have an idea about that. Washing their feet, washing their hands, putting water up their nose to blow the devil out every morning. They say this Satan sleeps in your nose. Well, how many Satans are there? With How many billions of Muslims are there? Is there that many Satans? They say Satan sleeps up in your nose. That's in their Quran or in the Hadith, one of them. But they have enough sense to put water up their nose and blow the devils out in the morning to get clean. And they know more than Christians. And they don't even have a Bible. They got a twisted book of... It's not even philosophy. It's screwed up. But they have enough sense to know when they go before all of their God, they wash their hands, they wash their feet, and in the mornings they blow the devil out of their nose. Maybe you should try that. Too. The, times the times of ignorance, of ignorance God, God overlooked. But now he, now commands, he commands all people, people everywhere, everywhere to repent. To repent.
there were some present at that very time who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way?